This has been a living nightmare. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't sleep well last night. Look at my hair. I haven't washed my hair in a while. Hey, what's going on? I'm Merle. I spend a lot of my time producing a lot of vegan content, a lot of healthy food stuff. People assume that I therefore know everything about living well. That is just not the case. So I decided to talk to my friend Kanchan, who is like a wellness genius. Hey guys, my name is Kanchan. I have a PhD in molecular biology and I'm a certified health coach, but I'm also a mom to two young kids and I'm not always able to practice what I preach. My stress tends to take over my life, running around like a headless chicken sometimes. And I don't have a solid routine to make myself happier and to really leave that stress. I agreed to do a 30 day challenge where we take seven of what she believes are the most important steps you can take to live a happier, less stressful life. The seven steps that we are going to be embarking on are time restricted eating, focusing on real whole foods, moving our body every day as a celebration, prioritizing sleep like it's a pot of gold, honoring and managing stress, mastering our mindset and paying attention to primary foods, the things beyond our plate that nourish us. So for the first week, we're gonna start by focusing on one of the seven steps every day. And then after that first week, we're gonna put all of them into practice every day for the rest of the month. How do you measure your happiness? The most important thing when you're considering how to measure your own happiness is to make sure that you're measuring it against yourself. So what makes you happy or what well-being looks like to you is not going to be what it looks like for other people. Conchin and I are gonna be taking the Oxford Happiness Questionnaire. Tally this up and let's see what happens after 30 days. Today is the first day of this whole 30 day challenge and today we're gonna be focused on time restrictive eating. <laughs> I wanna eat something. Studies have shown that if you can wrap up dinner by seven or 8 p.m., you improve your metabolic health, your insulin sensitivity, you can better manage your weight, you sleep better. I was like running around doing errands and I got back at 7.50 and I'm supposed to stop eating at eight. So I guess I'm just gonna hold off for the rest of the night. We wrapped up dinner today at 6.30 p.m. You do have kids, get on their schedule. You'll automatically be doing time restricted eating. I've got my tea here and then I've got this crazy open face sandwich. Lesson learned, plan ahead a little bit better with the timing to stop eating at eight. What are earth grown nutrients? Things that grow from the earth. Lots of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lentils, legumes. And here's the amazing thing. We can follow the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, if we can eat this way, we are winning. So I made myself a nice little oatmeal with some berries and some flax seeds. Octopus and shrimp ceviche. Doritos are not real food. Going in the 20% bucket, I gotta try a couple. So there's a massive link between exercise and movement and brain health and hello, happiness. Exercise for me is one of those things that if I'm on a good routine with it, I'm really excited about it and it makes me happy. But if I fall out of routine, I really enjoy falling out of routine. And I'm on like a couple months of not doing regular movement. So today I'm gonna start with yoga because my hips are super tight because I'm working from home all the time now. I know I picked the laziest yoga I could have picked. It was all on the ground. It was mostly laying down or sitting, but it was exactly what I needed. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't sleep well last night, so it was tempting to skip the movement, but I was like, if there's a day I need it, it's today. So got a little yoga in. Movement is one of those things you're never gonna regret having done. So if you're on the fence and you're like, should I move for 20 minutes or should I not? Just do it. Sleep is one of the most important, if not the most important, pillar of health, period. I have a lot of issues with my sleep cycle. I have this overwhelming feeling that there's someone in my apartment. As soon as I turn my lights off, my mind is racing at night. So then I end up falling asleep at two, three, four in the morning. So I have to try to be asleep by midnight tonight. When we sleep, we activate repair of DNA, we activate repair and clearance of toxins from our brain. All right, look who's putting her eye mask on earlier than usual in the night. Ah, a classy and beautiful princess. Good yeah. night. Good night. I'm gonna get off my phone, read a book, in my dim light, and go to bed. Hey everyone, I just wanna say a very big thank you to all of you. <laughs> I'm just 
supposed to be sleeping. Prioritizing sleep, we're on a roll. Our first night trying to go to sleep before midnight was a big fail. It's noon and we didn't fall asleep till like 1.30 or two in the morning. The body's not used to it. When we breathe deeply, we send a very calming, reassuring signal to our brain. So the box breathing method worked for a while. Like there was some time I was so focused on trying to sync it, counting to five up with my heartbeat that I forgot I was meditating. But then towards the end, I got a little restless. So I hope that that improves. There was a lot to juggle with the kids and coming home and unpacking and all these things. So I decided to bring myself out for a walk and to knock out movement and deep breathing in the same breath. There is no success or failure in meditation. Just sitting with yourself, becoming aware of one's habitual thought patterns, just observing. It feels weird doing this by myself. It feels weirder doing this on camera. I'm gonna do it anyway. I am grateful that I have the tenacity to pursue my dreams. My resilience. I am surrounded by incredibly supportive friends and family. My optimism. For my health and the health of those I love. We give so many people compliments all the time, yet when we start to think about things we love about ourselves, it's like, oh, I don't know. Hearing yourself say things out loud changes your perception of those things. It just brings it to the forefront of your mind in a different way. That's why therapy is so helpful. There are things in our lives that are not on our plate that are food, they nourish us. These can be our relationships, our work, our hobbies. For starters, I called my stepdad a little earlier today who hasn't been feeling so well. I already feel good about it. I am going to show some love and attention to financial independence and financial security as a creative, a creator, and an entrepreneur. This is the schedule Conchin made for me. Like, I think she overestimates how adult I actually am. 7 to 8 a.m. <laughs> this is gonna be a problem. I sleep in sometimes. Five minutes of deep breathing and your daily affirmations. Normally in the morning, I wake up and I go on my phone. 9 to 10 a.m. 25 minutes minimum of relatively high intensity movement. 12 to 1, lunch. Check in with your stress levels and do a few rounds of square breathing. Mid-afternoon, check in with your primary foods. Okay. 7 to 8 p.m. dinner, 9 to 10 p.m. five minute meditation, 11 to 12 a.m. off screens, unwind, go to bed. I'm gonna try and then maybe adapt it in a way that works for me. It's already 11 o'clock, I haven't even started yet, but I think I might just force myself to do some of the deep breathing and then take 25 minutes to just do a quick yoga and do the other stuff as it comes. <laughs> I don't know, the evening just went completely sideways. Kids and work. I was trying to do square breathing and I was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's just too much, it's too much. So yesterday we went off the rails quite a bit. I was shooting for work, so I was eating things that were fried and not that healthy. Then I continued to eat after 8 p.m. because I had a really late dinner because I was so full from eating all day. I didn't do any of my meditation or my affirmations or my breath work. These practices are not meant to be some sort of magic bullet solution. I've been having trouble keeping up. It just doesn't feel like I have time to fit in shooting, editing, cooking, working out, meditating. It just feels overwhelming. And then when I slip up on things, my anxiety gets worse and then I have more trouble sleeping. Sleep continues to be a work in progress. I am definitely struggling with making room for more primary foods in my life. Sometimes I can be so hard on myself. It has to look like this. Primary foods means this. And I'm like, things that nourish us off our plate, spending time with my kids. I went and took the time to go on a walk and that was actually very helpful. Cleared my mind, got some of my breathing in. I need to remember that it actually helps when I dedicate time to myself and taking care of myself before taking care of the to-do list, projects, other people. I had this realization that the reason movement is always on point for me is because for years, I have been so consistent about my movement practice that it has kind of become autopiloted. Something I've noticed is that when I stop eating at eight, I, it's easier for me to get up in the morning. The times that I've cheated a little and eaten after 8 p.m., I've been a little more groggy in the morning. Something I do really look forward to doing and that calms me down and that I think I'm gonna kind of integrate into my breathing exercise is cooking. And so I'm gonna try to bring more mindfulness to my cooking time and enjoy it. This week was nuts. 
very, very stressful with lots of work deadlines. Just a reminder of how powerful breath work is and how that continues to be my kind of work in progress area. Today was a great day. We went for an hour long walk followed by two hours of tennis. I meditated this morning. I've said three things I'm grateful for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get out there. I'm not gonna to a shot. Running errands, picking up kids from play dates. Just trying to make it work in mom life. Getting the movement in no matter what. Guys, at 28 years old, I've got into a consistent habit of waking up at a little before 8 a.m. and going to bed before midnight. I don't care if this is pathetic. It's a big deal. The deep breathing, meditation, affirmations happening this morning. Movement is happening, no problem. Sleep is happening because we're on the kids' sleep schedule. Having moments where you just feel so happy, you could scream or you could roll down a hill or you just can't keep it in your own body. That is so important, but it should only be one part of what a holistically well life looks like. I decided to spend my night talking to my best friends. I miss so much and making time for them instead of working on work. I'm really happy. I feel more connected to them. It might mean authentically connecting with people, even if it's not a fun conversation, even if you're crying, if you're stressed, if you're sharing, that's still an incredibly meaningful part of life. I really am feeling it in my bones now, like how important it is to just enjoy these practices regardless of what kind of end result they're gonna give you. I think the goal isn't to be happy, it's to find what makes your life meaningful and learn which tools can help you get there faster and healthier and maybe with a little bit of a sense of humor. <laughs> and just try to be nice to people along the way because we're always gonna find challenges, we're always gonna find obstacles. But projecting an image of perfection is a lie because nobody has it all figured out. We can do things for ourselves that will help us be happier, but the reality is if we are only focusing on our personal happiness and not also working to make our society and the communities and the spaces around us more fair, then we're actually not going to be able to feel the full level of happiness and full level of well-being that we're striving for. 